Hi there. Tonight, we're going to jolly old England, from the kitchen at least, and having some fun deep frying a batch of fish and chips. And that means we get to bring out the Lodge cast iron fish fryer again. Deep frying does take some work, but the end result is certainly worth it, especially when you end up with one of the United Kingdom's most famous dishes. Except that I never did understand why those folks there in London town insist on using chips for fried potatoes when here in New England we call them fries. But whatever you call them, if you've never had them, then you should certainly give this a try. For a batch of good fish and chips, it's important to know the rule of two. That means we coat the fish twice and fry the chips twice. And just with the heck of it. Some smoked paprika, because why not? That's why we're preparing the batter mix using only the dry ingredients. But if we coat the fish in the batter too early and let it sit too long, the batter will become thick and pasty. So right now we're only preparing a dry mix. Next, we peel five or six potatoes and cut them in the traditional shape for fries. I mean chips. I like how you can get a whole bunch of chips from only a few potatoes. Once they're all cut up, we place the chips into a container and cover them with cold water to soak for about 15 minutes while we prepare the next step. Also, we're chopping up a big onion so we can have some onion rings to go with the fish and chips. Consider that a bonus. And next, we prepare the fish. We slice some fish fillets into medium-sized pieces and dry them with paper towels. This will help the batter stick to the fish. Finally, we drain the water from the chips and dry them off as well. Again, the chips need to be dried off because we'll be frying them in hot oil and as they say, oil and water don't mix. And with that, it's time to bring out our large cast iron fish fryer. We're using about two to three quarts of oil here. As the oil is heating, we can coat the fish pieces with a seasoned flour mix. I am reminded of Gollum's song from the Two Towers. A life without breath, as cold as death, never thirsting, ever drinking, clad in mail, never clinking. We only wish to catch a fish, so juicy, sweet. When the oil reaches 300 degrees Fahrenheit, it's time to fry the chips. We place the chips into the hot oil and fry them for five minutes. This pot is big enough to fry all the chips at once. Now, we're not completely cooking the chips at this time. Rather, this is blanching the chips, and we'll be fully cooking them later when they're fried for the second time. Blanching the chips helps remove moisture from inside the potatoes, and we can see a lot of steam coming from the oil here. This will keep the insides of the potatoes soft, while the second frying will give them a good crust. After five minutes, remove the chips from the oil and let them cool and drain on a rack. The next step is to heat the oil to 375 degrees Fahrenheit for frying the fish. As the oil is heating, now we can prepare the batter for the fish by mixing in some beer. Making this batter is similar to making gravy, as we keep stirring and adding beer until it reaches the right consistency. Just be sure to beat the batter well so there are no lumps. Now we test the oil to make sure it's hot enough by dropping in a bit of the batter to make a hush puppy. And once it's frying well, it's time to fry some fish. We take each piece of fish and dip it in the batter, then place it in the hot oil. We've already done the hard work and this is the fun part. The fish pieces only need to fry for about four to five minutes until they're done. It's likely the first pieces will be done almost immediately after you've finished putting the last piece into the oil. 
When the fish pieces are done, scoop them out and place them onto a separate rack or platter with paper bags to drain and cool off. Oh yeah, this is well cooked. And now we heat the oil to 375 once again and fry the chips for the last time. A comment from the cast iron cooking group. Someone said their kids always ask them to fry the chips after the fish because the fish oil made the chips taste better. This will take about 5 to 10 minutes. It's easy to tell when they're finished and ready. When the chips float in the oil, they're done. And finally, as a bonus, we use the extra batter and fry up some onion rings. And at last, we're now ready to enjoy some genuine British-style fish and chips. When it comes to pub grub, you can't do better than this. Deep frying is a lot of fun, and while this may not be the most healthy dish in the world, it's certainly worth making as a treat once in a while. It also helps to keep the cast iron seasoned, and the deep pot helped to prevent the grease from splattering all over the place, so cleanup was easy as well. And that goes to show that when you want to make a traditional deep fried dish, like fish and chips, the best way to do it is in the traditional manner, by making it in cast iron. Thank you for watching.